So in this video, we're going to have a closer look at two of the steps in this reaction. We're going to look at oxidative insertion and transmetallation. You should already be familiar with the content of the previous video and be aware of the different steps that make up this particular reaction. Well, our first step is oxidative insertion. So the typical example that I showed you was a bromobenzene. And you put in your palladium zero, two ligands on it, or a bidentate ligand, and you end up with palladium, carbon bond, halogen bond. What are the limits? What's the scope? Well, this works well for any halogen. So you can do that with a molecule where X is equal to chlorine, bromine, iodine, or a pseudo halogen called triflate. So abbreviated as OTF, but would be triflate. So any of those four will work, uh, at least in theory, as halogens to allow for oxidative insertion. In some cases it works better, in some cases it works uh, poorly. So there are two factors. Um, the main factor is the electronic factor. So to some extent if you have large bulky groups ortho to these, then you won't get oxidative insertion because sterics will get in the way. But the main factor is usually electronics. So if you think about what we're trying to do here, we're inserting a palladium into this bond. The stronger the carbon bromine bond is, the poorer the, um, the poorer the reaction or the slower the reaction is going to be. So if we compare, say for example, uh, this molecule here, and we ask ourselves, which is a stronger bond? Well, the carbon chlorine bond is stronger than the carbon bromine bond, and you'll have seen that before, uh, especially if you've done any mass spectrometry with halogens. So, immediately bromine is going to be more easily inserted, and or oxidative insertion is going to happen more easily uh, in the carbon bromine bond. And the order is usually chlorine is the worst, uh, bromine is much better, which is roughly depending on your ligands and your circumstances, the same as triflate, and then iodine is much better than that, much, much better. So iodine is the best and chlorine is the worst. But there's other factors, uh, other factors on which the strength of this bond depends. Your halogen is strongly elect electron withdrawing, it's in group seven, so it's going to pull electrons to this end of the bond, make a delta negative, as you know. This bond will be weaker then if the aromatic ring is also strongly electron withdrawing. So our next choice we're going to think about is which is going to be better, this molecule or This molecule. In one case, this carbon, sorry, in one case this carbon has an electron donating group, so this has an lone pair, it can donate by resonance. On the other hand, this carbonyl is reasonably strongly electron withdrawing. If this is electron withdrawing, it's pulling electrons away from this carbon, making this bond weaker. So electron withdrawing groups are going to increase the rate of oxidative insertion, and electron donating groups are going to reduce the rate of oxidative insertion. What else? Well, what is the scope of this kind of uh, reactant? It can be a simple aromatic ring with a halogen attached. It can also be a vinyl compound, so a carbon-carbon double bond with a halogen attached. And in fact, depending on your ligand system, it can also work with an sp3 carbon provided there are no beta hydrogens. So this is here is our alpha carbon and this here is our beta carbon. If there are no hydrogens attached to that beta carbon then it will often work as a coupling partner. Why is that? Well if we think about our uh, coupling partner, so if we think about um, this complex here that we would usually form, we'd have our palladium bromine and our palladium carbon bond. If there is a hydrogen 
on an adjacent carbon, then it is possible that this will eliminate out. And instead of getting the coupling, so instead of this hanging around to do transmetallation, which is slower, it will do what's called beta hydride elimination. And that, of course, isn't going to reduce the compound that we want. We'll end up with a carbon-carbon double bond and we'll end up with no coupling happening. We won't get transmetallation and we will have an unsuccessful reaction. So it's limited in scope, preferably electron donating, sorry, electron withdrawing groups. If not, then you would try and use a better halogen. So if your molecule has to be electron rich, then you're going to have to use a bromine or an iodine. If your molecule or your aromatic ring is very electron poor, you can use the chloride. Can't have a beta hydrogen. And that gets us to our scope for the halogen coupling partner. So now we're going to have a look at transmetallation. And to do that, I'm going to show you an example. This is the chromatic coupling. The chromatic coupling is similar to the Suzuki coupling, except in this case, we're using a Grignard reagent instead of a boronic acid. So if we take bromobenzene, as we have been doing, we know that the transmetallation step is going to happen. And now if we take our Grignard reagent, in this case, benzyl magnesium bromide, then we can draw out the coupling reaction between these two things. So the first thing that's happening here is that oxidative insertion. I'm going to draw it as already having happened. And we have a palladium uh, coordinated to a bromine and a benzene ring. In the reaction, it's going to uh, interact with the benzyl magnesium bromide and it's going to do transmetallation, which means the magnesium and the palladium are going to swap ligands. The bromide is going to go with the magnesium and the benzyl group is going to go with the palladium. And that is because it's energetically favorable to do that. Magnesium bromine or magnesium bromide ionic bonds are more energetically favorable than magnesium carbon bonds and the carbon palladium bonds are more favorable. So that reaction is going to proceed and you can see in our products, we now have a palladium with the two carbon bonds attached to it and we have the magnesium that has taken the bromide. So the bromide and the benzyl have exchanged places. So that's transmetallation. It works really well uh, in this case in the chromatic coupling. In other cases, you need something in the reaction to promote it. So in the case of the Suzuki coupling, it actually takes place over two steps. So in the Suzuki coupling, we might have a similar situation where we are doing uh, a coupling between bromobenzene, but in the Suzuki coupling, we're going to use a boronic acid. And boronic acid is, boron is definitely a metalloid at best. It's not, um, it's not so metallic in its properties. So this won't actually work. If you put in these two things, you won't get efficient transmetallation. So instead, what you need to do is put in a base. So we can use sodium ethoxide which is a reasonably strong base. And this will do the transmetallation first. So transmetallation one will be the oxygen uh, switching um, with the bromine or with the bromide to make sodium bromide and a palladium that now has an oxygen coordinated to it. So that's transmetallation one. We still have our boronic acid. That's just to indicate, that's supposed to indicate they're both in this reaction. And of course, we've also made our sodium bromide, which is of little interest anymore. Then we get a second transmetallation. So this uh, ethoxide is much better able to transmetallate onto the boron than the bromine, bromine was. Um, it'll form a much stronger uh, boron oxygen bond. So that's exactly what happens.
and now you have a boron oxygen bond and a palladium carbon bond. So the transmetallation step is always um, is always going to follow a similar pattern, but in some cases you also need a base. So it has to happen in two steps rather than just in one step. There's other cases um, in the Hiyama coupling where you need to add in fluoride or something like that to promote departure of the silicon. So it just depends on your particular coupling partners and for a particular reaction you just have to look it up. But it's always following this similar transmetallation 